The story of Judges illustrates the story of the human race. It's a downward spiral. One, departure from the way of truth. Two, domination by the enemy. Three, a desperate cry for help, sometimes after many years of bondage. And four, a deliverer raised up by God. The period covered by the Judges, including the Book of Ruth, is not easy to calculate because some of the stories overlap in time. Probably it covers about 300 years, from approximately 1400 to 1100 BC. Even considering that there must be some overlap, the years of peace are almost three times the number of years of oppression. This isn't to excuse the declension in Israel. In fact, one could wonder how they often waited so long before crying to the Lord. We could wonder, that is, if it weren't for our own wayward hearts. It's good to see, however, that the victory that Jehovah gave Israel through these judges was not a superficial thing. In most cases, it seems to have lasted for the lifetime of that generation, 40 years or so, and in the days of Ehud, well into the lives of the next generation too. These judges, 14 in number, are also called deliverers or saviors. That is, they didn't simply tell the Israelites what they should do, as the law did, but actively led them in victory against their enemies, as the Lord Jesus does for us. And graciously, four of them made it into God's hall of faith in Hebrews 11. In spite of the encouraging victories at times, we see growing deterioration throughout the book. Professor David Gooding has pointed out that Judges is arranged as a chiasm, a crossways arrangement with characters that contrast beginning at each end and moving to the center of the book. So, for example, Othniel, the first judge, is a model of what married life ought to be, while Samson, the last judge, is a solemn warning against the unequal yoke. Ehud, the second judge, took the fords of Jordan and slaughtered the enemy. Jephthah, the second last judge, took the fords of Jordan and slaughtered his brethren because they didn't speak the way he did. In the days of Deborah and Barak, Sisera, an enemy general, is slain by a woman with a blow to the head. Then Abimelech, supposedly the third to last judge in Israel, who was actually a tyrant, he must be stopped from destroying his own people by the blow to the head by another woman. In the middle is Gideon, who himself is a study in contrast and the pivot point in the book. He has a great beginning, standing against idolatry and fighting the Midianite enemy. But later in his career, he fought his own people and lapsed into idolatry and we read that all Israel played the harlot with the image he made. Hardly a ray of light is left when we come to the end of the book. A sad conclusion, repeated four times in chapters 17, 18, 19, and 21 reads, in those days there was no king in Israel, everyone did what was right in his own eyes. We see the utter inability of the judges to stem the growing flood of idolatrous practices, as well as the failure of the all tribal council to solve Israel's growing lawlessness, as seen in the crisis with the tribe of Benjamin. But we will find hope in the next book, Ruth, that takes us, of all places, to the little town of Bethlehem. And that's our scripture snapshot of the book of Judges.